Greetings my dear friend, my name is Maxim and welcome to my channel. And today we are going to be discussing glucose transport across the membranes. This is part 2 of the sequence of lectures regarding this topic. And we will be focusing primarily on glucose transporters type 1 and type 3. Well, without further ado, let's enjoy the lecture and dive into it. Glucose transporters type 1, 2 and 3 are widely distributed all over the body. Type 1 localization can be remembered via the simple mnemonic RBC play, which stands for red blood cells, blood brain barrier, cornea and placenta. Whereas glucose transporter type 3 can be found inside placenta and neurons. GLUT2 resides in GIT, pancreas, liver and kidney. I would like to remind you about affinity and Michaelis Menten constant. The former one refers to the strength by which two or more molecules interact or bind, whereas KM is defined as the substrate concentration at which the reaction rate is half of its maximum value. In other words, 50% of the active sites are occupied. The value of KM is inversely related to the affinity of the enzyme for its substrate. Let's do an experiment where we take three cells and put them in the same environment. I will add glucose to each of our containers but in different concentration. In the first case, the glucose concentration is very small, but the cell is able to reabsorb it. In other words, the glucose concentration is very small, but the transporters possessing a high affinity are already starting to work. In the second case, the cell does not reabsorb glucose in small concentrations, and I increase its concentration to 15 millimolars. After which transporters begin to work, talking about the fact that the affinity for the glucose is very low. This cell needs a large amount of glucose in the environment to ingest it. So the affinity is low, but KM is high. The third example is an intermediate. Blood-brain barrier is a highly selective semi-permeable border of endothelial cells that prevents solutes in the circulatory blood from non-selectively crossing into the central nervous system. It is formed by endothelial cells of the capillary wall, astrocyte and feet and sheet in the capillary and pericytes embedded in the capillary basement membrane. Glucose passes through the barrier via GLUT1 that is located on the endothelial cells and then enters the neuron via the glucose transporter type 3. De vivo disease GLUT1 deficiency syndrome It is autosomal dominant genetic metabolic disorder associated with GLUT1 deficiency. Signs and symptoms include Infantile seizures, refractory to anticonvulsants, ataxia, dystonia, dysarthria, opsoclonus, which is uncontrolled, irregular, non-rhythmic eye movement, both horizontal and vertical, spasticity, deceleration of head growth, microcephaly. The defect is located on chromosome number 1 at CLC. 2A1 gene. Diagnosis is done via glucose concentration in the CSF, which is less than 2.2 millimolars per liter, or low CSF plasma glucose ratio, less than 0.4. We can call it hypoglucorrhea. For the treatment, we have to provide an additional source of energy for the brain. So we put them on ketogenic diet. Well folks, this is all what I have for you today. I hope that this lecture helped you a lot and if it is so, please leave a like, 
comment down at the comment section and subscribe to my channel. I wish you a very lovely day and see you guys later. Goodbye.